Welcome everybody. This is my research proposal, Better Outcomes for Adult Learners with Yoga. I am a yoga teacher and I also teach Indian language and culture at the State Department. My students are mostly diplomats with high stress levels. Due to intense competition, they're not very self-regulated and also suffer from negative dietary habits leading to obviously negative health issues. So I offered to teach yoga to a few of them and I saw that their learning was quicker post-intervention and also that they remembered it longer, whatever they learned, and their response in class was more enthusiastic, positive, with a lot of laughter. So my research question is how does yoga help in better outcomes for adult learners? In the existing research, I read about four studies and most of them were for children. Yoga intervention for children to study outcomes. The first one was for preschool children and the standardized curriculum called Yoga Kids was implemented daily by the preschool teacher. The second is for sixth grade students, again Yoga Kids curriculum and here the kids followed a two-minute yoga practice that the teacher led the students and then a two-minute brief meditation. In the third resource for grades 9 to 12, there was meditation and centering exercise for five minutes, stretching and gentle movements again for five minutes, yoga asana or postures for 30 minutes, which is what we call yoga in general, the, the main stay of yoga and then this was followed by mindfulness prompts integrated into these postures with a closing meditation of 10 minutes now this they called be bold breathe observe let it go and do it again the final resource the curriculum used was kripalu yoga in schools and this was a 32 session version and they don't explain the breakdown of what happens in the, the yoga intervention. So in this uh, four research resources, the procedure to participate in the first one was via a lottery system. So the preschool teachers reviewed the recruitment packet, which included the parental consent form and the parental survey. In the second resource, a letter was sent home with IRB approval from Syracuse University to the guardians and parents of the students in the school district in which mindful yoga was being integrated. In the third resource, brief presentations were performed in classroom to describe the study, but there was also financial incentives, a $5 gift card for returning consent forms up to a total of $40 if you included pre and post yoga intervention. In the final resource, parental consent and child assent pertain only to the acquisition of the outcome measures. That is because the yoga program was already integrated into the school's PE curriculum by the school administration for the duration of the study. So how do we describe the demographics and the statistics of this analytical sample? Overall, if you look at this slide, we see that the majority of people are Caucasian or white, and it's an ethnically diverse mix in most schools, multiracial. Uh, in the third resource, it was majority African American, but we see that Hispanics and Asians are also equally represented. And in terms of gender, boys and girls are also more or less equal. So what are the successful outcomes in the first resource? This is for the preschool children. So it shows that children in this intervention demonstrated improvements in inhibitory control, a lot of focused attention and promoting self-regulation. One good thing that I notice here is that 
there did not appear to be any differences in terms of parental education and their effects on uh, yoga outcomes that is uh, let's say a student uh, has a parent who's a doctor and the other student has a parent who's a janitor there was no difference in the outcomes of the students so their parents education or what they did did not matter in the second resource we see that the adolescent self-regulatory inventory scores for females and males did not differ, so which is also a good thing. So parental education doesn't really matter and also gender doesn't matter in terms of how you self-regulate yourself if you have yoga in intervention. And the teacher also reported that the benefits outweighed the brief time commitment, which is excellent news. So if you do yoga or any form of that in terms of breathing or meditation even for a short while the benefits far outweigh the limited time that you put in for it she also or he also talked about sustained concentration and internal reflective processes in terms of writing and, and studying there were example statements from students uh, such as it helped me concentrate more in class focuses my mind and the days we don't do yoga and meditation, it's hard to focus. So these are some good outcomes. In the third resource, which was basically about um, addiction and substance abuse, um, it talks about how the percentage of students with the yoga condition reported not drinking alcohol in the past one month increased over time. So the ones who are not already drinking, they kept not drinking for a longer time. And the students who received yoga intervention, as compared to those in the control condition, the alcohol use decreased and it also improved social functioning. We also saw that 31% of yoga students who usually had one or two drinks in the past 30 days this proportion decreased to just 11%. That's a huge difference at post-test. In addition, the proportion of yoga students reporting no alcohol use increased from pre to post-test by 20%. In the final study, the participant participants in the control condition reported a significant willingness to smoke cigarettes immediately but it appears that in the yoga intervention many have prevented uh, it may have prevented students from becoming willing to smoke cigarettes that is so those who had yoga intervention were not as willing to smoke uh, cigarettes and it was also found that the school-based yoga intervention maintained the GPA during the period of intervention versus the control group participants. Qualitative studies revealed that the students reported several beneficial effects of yoga and its outcomes, such as less stress, more relaxation, self-regulation, and lesser or almost no substance use. A note here, uh, stu studies of yoga and meditation have reported mixed findings. So quantitative outcomes don't show as much significant change whereas participant uh, those who are participating in this interventions they reported uh, higher changes or significant changes when they were interviewed so qualitative uh, changes show to be higher than quantitative quantitative changes so what were the research designs in the first resource, this was a quasi-experimental design, utilized a pre-test, post-test with a non-equivalent group. Now we see that here, these are preschool kids, so they're not randomly designed, uh, assigned to uh, intervention and control conditions, like the other two uh, resources are. For example, in the second and the third, these are specifically randomly controlled trials. In the fourth, it's not very clear, but it does say that they're randomized to the yoga condition, mainly because the school uh, was already having these yoga programs. 
So everybody had to undergo these yoga programs and only the outcomes were measured. So uh, there were no separate uh, control and intervention groups, so to speak. In terms of research gaps, what I found during the course of my study is that almost or no research is done on the effects of yoga intervention and its attendant outcomes for adult second language learners, such as diplomats. Also, of course, no comparison has been done across ages with the same intervention. Financial incentives were offered to participants in one of the studies. And this, I think, is a, could lead to bias or, or definitely it won't be impartial in terms of what it shows up uh, in its results. Now, one study uh, quoted that they kept their yoga secular by removing Sanskrit from it. And I think of this as appropriation and digesting of yoga into a mainstream PE activity without giving due respect and regard to its origins. Also, more importantly, uh, it does not accrue benefits which Sanskrit mantras give. Now, studies of yoga and meditation also reported mixed findings in which quantitative outcomes don't show as much of a change as qualitative um, uh, research. Most of these studies finally were small samples, making it very difficult for external validity, especially in classroom settings with you know, children and it's, it's hard to generalize uh, with humans and, and their reactions. Uh, to a practice. It's a very live setting. So coming to my uh, yoga intervention research proposal, I propose that in my study, we look into the research, uh, sorry, look into the outcomes of adult learners post yoga intervention. This will also bridge gaps that I have encountered, which I just mentioned. So first off, this will be for adult learners only and they will be given training in traditional yoga with Sanskrit mantras, which as I quote here, um, improves brain power and memory. And a large sample will be studied to improve external validity. So these are quantitative studies, randomized controlled trials using standardized assessment tools to measure the results. This study of mine is going to be one year long with a sample size of 100 adult language learners between the ages of 25 and 45 years. And there will be two groups of 50 each or 50 learners each in the intervention and control groups. Independent variable here is intervention via the Shivananda Yoga module and dependent variable would be the outcomes of the adult language learners. Participants, uh, this is open to all who respond to the flyers and the emails with a basic questionnaire regarding their yoga experience. And uh, we are looking for people who do not have previous yoga background for better internal validity and outcome measuring. So no monetary inducement, so no financial uh, bribing, so to speak. And adult learners at the State Department are usually white, followed by Black, Asian, and Hispanic. And uh, depending on who responds and what genders uh, show interest, we will go ahead with this uh, research. So it's hard to say at this point what the demographics would be. How would I execute it? This study is based on students receiving one hour of yoga training daily in English and with Sanskrit prayers, 20 minutes of postures, that is asanas, followed by 20 minutes of breathing pranayama and 20 minutes of dhyana meditation. So traditionally trained teachers are available at the Shivananda Yoga Centers around the world and these uh, teachers can volunteer their time at the State Department because it can be a part of their coursework. So they are learning to be teacher trainers um, and also yoga teachers. So they need to fulfill a requirement of a certain number of hours, which they can by teaching uh, students, adult learners at the State Department. 
So uh, to ensure external validity, there are some assessment tools that I would use. And um, there are very many right here, but I think it's important to uh, understand and fill the gaps of um, outcomes for outcomes with yoga intervention for adult learners. So mindfulness measures, self-regulation measures, inhibitory control, behavioral regulation, sustained attention, uh, willingness, stress scale, mood scale. So all these are very important measurements and tools. But most important is the end of test proficiency exam on the target language that these students undergo through the said period, mostly seven months to a year. So are they performing better in these language tests that, are, that they require to um, uh, complete and, and be successful to go to post? So are they doing better? Are they doing it? Um, are they feeling good about it? Are they stressed about it? So hopefully with yoga intervention, uh, they would ha this would be all positive. So the positive in outcomes that I'm looking at and I'm hoping to find is that there is improved and increased focused attention in class and deeper reflective processes and, and better deeper listening, a lot of critical thinking, empathy is improved, pro-social behavior improves, health benefits of course, less stress, they can handle it better, less addiction to uh, substances, especially alcohol or cigarettes. And finally, better learning, deeper learning, longer uh, memory and better performance in language tests. With that, I come to the end of my presentation and these are the citations. And uh, thank you very much for your time and thank you to Dr. Abby Cahill for giving us this opportunity because I definitely have learned a lot and I'm really enjoying looking at everybody else's presentations. Thank you so much.